Good evening, uh, Final Fantasy One randomizer fans. Uh, how are y'all doing tonight? Uh, we're here for an exciting race with um, the wholly, completely randomized flag set. Uh, I'm joined in the booth by fellow Unforged Wombat, uh, Reckless Charlie. Charlie, how are you doing tonight? Doing pretty well, Zorvis. Thanks for uh, thanks for the intro. Thanks for the lead, and thanks for. Uh, I'm just very happy to be here. This is a. It's been a fun flag set to play, and. Uh, it's been fun watching some races go. Uh, I'm very excited to see it already out of the gate. I see some pr a pretty good spread of uh, of party comps so far. Uh, what do you think, Sorbius? Uh Well, it looks like uh, Woo Bear and uh, Rojo taking the approach that I took in this flag set, uh, and something a little different from Luffy and Lord Fizzlebeef. Yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of red mages in this flag set. Uh, they don't get improved harm, and harm is absolutely bonkers. Um, but they also get to wear armor, so, you know, I don't know. True, they do get a little bit more HP, a little bit more armor, take hits a little bit better, but yeah, you could, you can absolutely miss out on some of the, uh, some of the key spell slots, uh, here and there. Uh, hey, you the, don't want to not have access to Harm 8. So true. Uh, harm 8, the, har the high-level Harm spells have just been so huge in a lot of the seeds. Yeah, for those of you who are not aware, uh, in this week of the Fall League, uh, everything in these seeds is randomized, uh, except for Garland, who is vanilla, and Chaos, who is still Chaos. Um, but the Fiends are all alternate Fiends. You may see some uh, some faces you recognize from other Final Fantasy games. Uh, all of the spells are completely randomized. All the armor and weapons are completely randomized. So who knows what we're going to get. Uh, we've given us a peek at the Black Mage Shop. Time eight. That's a good one. Yep. Not too much going on in the white mage shop. Just a just really just a cure four, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. But at least there is the Tim eight and the time eight and the fire three to get things started. Yeah, cure four a little, a little bit, uh, not as strong as you would think uh, because of the way the spell randomizer works. Um, that's I think approximately a cure three. Because uh, it goes up to cure eight, I want to say. It's good to know. And two, the, uh, the 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 having all the names be different is uh, for all the items too. On top of that, and the new spells they kind of get incorporated. In. There's a lot to have to read, kind of mid race. Yeah, that select button uh, puts in some work on these flags for sure. Not too much for loot here in uh, uh, Topher. Garland goes down to a time eight. And we'll get our first get him checks here in a second for Luffy. Yeah. It's bottle. And a canal. Alright. It's an interesting start. The uh, we have we we have the extended overworld on for this, right? Like it's it, there's a lot of possibilities that open up for that. Uh also Northern Docks and Bahamut's Dock are all on. It should be good. Uh, I mean, we don't know if we're going to see a, a an early canoe force us to make an ice cave dive. Don't I mean, that's what that. I'm rooting for. Oh yeah, same here. It's always a always a good challenge. That makes for makes for a good run. It's like Luffy and Wibir are sharing a brain cell and taking the walk out to Provoka to check the pirate. Yep. And Lord Fizzle Beef and Rojo coming in uh, behind, having gotten their garland, their items from Garland. We'll see if any one of them decides to um, head down to Marsh Cave instead of going right. I doubt it. It can be interesting to go left instead if you have maybe TNT or Adamant to turn in, but probably without an item to go that way. There's not a lot of reason. That makes sense. And two, if you maybe if you saw a warp uh, in the in the first level shop, then at, or if you had it as one of the bonuses, uh, that make that trip a lot warp or exit make that trip a lot easier. Yeah, level two spells pretty unexciting. Uh, life seven, kind of the highlight, which is good. It's a full heal, um, but nothing offensive being added to our uh, team. All right, so it's a, really a little bit slower of a of a start. It seems like uh, in comparison to kind of some of the way that some of these can roll. Uh, that should make for a good time overall. Yeah, sad to see no level one fast eight. <laughs> yeah, fast eight, temper eight, harm eight, kill eight. Uh, wall eight, a, a good a good spell also. Yeah, 
Uh, fog eight also surprisingly good. Um, turns out when you add basically an opal bracelet worth of defense to your whole party, uh, that's pretty all right. Yeah, not bad at all. So we do have the adamant pickup. It's a, it's a, if the play walking simulator part one and go kind of across, <laughs> like back where we came from, and then some. Yeah, I mean, there's not really anything else to check at this point, so, you know, we were kind of headed that way anyway, so, you know, it, it feels good, I th would assume, for all of them to have gone and provoke a first and have this Adam to turn on the way down. Sure, that makes sense. Do you think that after kind of making the crossing over, you yeah, turn the Adam and do you think you just go ahead and hit a uh, Marsh Cave from there? Uh, I would, because I'm here. Um, one of the things in this particular flag set is uh, every item check... Uh, has a key item. There are no, you know, rue sticks or extra ribbons or uh, actual just straight up zonks like last week. You know, ev every single check rewards you with either progression or a terminal key item that you need. Uh, so I would just go to Marsh while I'm here. Um, although the ship kind of throws a wrench in it because you may want to take that ship down to Elf. Or go out through the canal and check out which NPC is in Melmont, which is... Uh, useful information to have. Looks like Wu is going down to Elf, though. It makes good sense. You get you get your level 3 spell, level 3, level 4 spells, get to peek those, get to peek whether, what NP, what turn in NPCs in in, uh, in Elfland, and can kind of make your decision from there. Uh, it's... The, the, having the ship kind of here should lead to some pretty good divergence. Yeah, we'll see. Um... The uh, other thing that's randomized that we've sort of been alluding to is uh, Bahamut, the elf caretaker, and uh, Dr. Un are also randomized in their locations. They sort of rotate through their positions, and there's Bahamut hanging out with the elf prince. <laughs> uh, so that means uh, we'll have to... Good to know if we find a tail <laughs> early, but it does mean we're going to have to take a little walk to turn an herb when we find it. So Temper true. 6 at level 3. That's good. Noting that our ninja will be able to learn that later, also. So, indeed. Fade and seven, like it, love it. Hey, we we, we take those. It's uh, never a bad thing to see that uh, see that early. Still no key item in the shops, so we're looking at Crescent or Gaia or Onrak now, it's or thankfully. the OG bottle merchant, perhaps. Oh, kill eight at fourth, fourth level. Not too, not too bad. Yeah, fast four. Unfortunately, only single target, but that will probably get picked up eventually. Yeah, the uh, Lithuanian so. superstore is also on this flag set, so hopefully, what you get to do is promote and then go turn in your slab, uh, and then shop for all your spells for your promotion classes. It's definitely great to be able to kind of route all of that together. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. So we have our first dives into Marsh Cave. We'll, uh, kind of see what comes from it. Ooh, these tigers are kind of rude. Yeah, it's kind of gross. I mean, in some ways, good to see Stone Touch uh, an early enemy. I mean, it's kind of unlikely <laughs> to show up later, but uh, not uh, not what you want. Take a reset out of that. You know, walking halfway to Marsh Cave. And uh, early katana for, for Luffy is pretty awesome. That's a good find for. Uh, you don't have to have. You don't have to go hunting too much more to find a good weapon to, to win the game with. So. Yeah, uh, definitely. Having not taken a fighter, uh, Luffy's going to feel pretty good having picked it up because that will definitely let their uh, ninja be a you know a, a carry um, since that is their best weapon and because of the random rolls, can be an extremely powerful weapon. I didn't see the exact numbers. Maybe we'll get a peek when uh, River picks it up. We get 100 crit, which was kind of nice. Uh, That's a lot of crit. A little low in the attack, it looked like, but uh, you can make up for that with those temper 6s or temper 8s or whatever we found. Very true. So we, we do have the, the crown coming out of Marsh Cave. It's, uh, it's kind of conveniently placed. Uh, not too, not too awful to kind of make that check immediately after. Yeah, it's nice to have all that sort of, you know, 
line up for you so you don't need to run around back and forth across this uh, part of the world. Oh yeah, it's, uh, certainly could have been a little less kind on the randomization there. Uh, yeah, oh, for sure. The, the worst possible thing, in my mind, as a runner there would be the canoe. Oh yeah, you have to walk all the way across. Well, you've got your ship and canal already, so that opens up with deals and waterfall and crescent and ice cave. So, like, where, where do you go? Yeah, that, that's a, a lot of decisions, for sure. I, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I missed exactly what Asto said he had, but we should find out pretty shortly. Thankfully, he doesn't have too many hit points, right? Yeah. Oh, no, he's, he's already dead. I blinked and missed it. There's the uh, herb we were talking about. He did. Uh... So, ship and canal, um, we can definitely go turn that in once we figure out where the elf uh, person is. Who is either going to be down at Bahamut's Hole or uh, in Melmont. Yep, and with the, the docks for Cardia being there, we will be able to to turn that in at some point soon. So it wouldn't be yeah. too surprising to see somebody like make the trip down towards Ordeal or towards, towards that area soon, but I guess we still are still missing a canoe, right? We are missing the canoe. Uh, we can definitely still get to Crescent, um, so that's a check we can Tile is worth doing or not, because you have no way to know what level that monster is, where it's from, how much XP it gives. Uh, usually, uh, I found the better strategy is to kind of ignore getting any experience at all for a while and just picking it up as you're walking up Sky or diving down Sea Shrine because those monsters are basically guaranteed to give these an XP because their levels are still based on where they pop up, uh, even with the random uh, monsters. Makes sense. So it looks like it's the vanilla Dr. Una in the... All right, we're going down to so. Dragonland. I'm going to take a, a long walk down the hallway. It's, uh... So Luffy getting that, that part of it turned in. So. And getting two of those dragons out of the way that you got to talk to. Oh yeah, that's our uh, that's our bonus objective for this round, isn't it? It sure is. It's the same one we had Sunday. Ah, so talk to five different dragons, but I guess... You still, we, you can only kind of do the two here. You still have to have the airship to get the rest. Me too. Uh, we'll be electing not to talk to the dragons. I hope he has remembered that that is the bonus. We'll find out. Are there enough dragons in the other, uh, the other sections oh, yeah. to kind of cover it? Oh. Yeah, there's two in the key item room. Um, there's a couple singles in some of the other ones, and uh, one of the other islands that has treasure and it has three. Ah, very nice. Okay, so even missing, even if you don't talk to the two, you can still kind of get around. I missed what the herb turn was. It looks like it was the TNT. It's the only thing Luffy has that nobody else does. Pretty Again, we're kind of just going back and forth across this bottom of the uh, the world. We haven't really had to branch out too far to find anything. Indeed, and thankfully, it's not too bad of a of a of a run to, to get this. I mean, it could have been worse. Could be that you have to come back later on at some point and route route again. It might be a little awkward, right? Like if you. You have to like make an extra stop here at some point. But... Yeah, especially having already turned in the adamant. You want to just turn this in and, and be done with dwarf. All right, what do we get? We get a granola. Oh, I believe that is the ruby stand-in for Luffy. Yes. Yeah, I think I think so. That's a. So that opens up a couple of checks. Um, again, more kind of chasing the quest items, but uh, I'm still kind of waiting to see when we get our canoe, when we get our airship, kind of open everything else up. Yeah, I mean, the only other thing that's open other than this ruby is the freebie in Crescent Lake, which is uh, kind of a long walk to get to, um, or the um, shop in Onrak potentially having an item for sale, because with Northern Docks on, you can get to Onrak with the boat. Um, but this is two item checks between the Titan's Trove and the Sage's Cave, so I'm not surprised to see Luffy do this since we're already on this side of the world. Alright, just a rod. Uh, 
No progression, but it is something we need. We do have to kill all the fiends. Whoever they may be. Indeed, it's always fun to see which fiends get rolled to. Uh, some, some good work that's been done to, uh, to, to kind of present something, present a cool spin on it. Yeah, uh, the random fiends are very cool. A um, little disappointed with uh, one of the sprites. We'll, we'll talk about that if it shows up. And there's the canoe. Oh, interesting. So, at this point, yeah, that opens up, it's up a good bit. It opens up Ice Cave and Ordeals uh, and Waterfall. Right? Is there something Oh, yeah. Else? No, that's, uh, that's it. Um, I, I think, personally, uh, just because I like making those checks, I would run down to um, Ordeals and then go to Waterfall and check the item shop in Onrek. But we'll see what our, uh, what our runners decide to do. I don't like Ice Cave. Ice Cave is stinky. I don't want to go there. I'm going to check the other stuff first. Yeah. Also, not as much of a fan of Ice Cave, but it always seems to have the goods and the seeds that I rolled. It, I rolled for it myself, does have so. them a lot. My hope would be that the floater is uh, not in Crescendor Ice Cave, and I feel like a genius for picking it up in Waterfall over deals and have a much easier time. Uh, getting to said ice cave. True, but, and if if the floater ends up in something like a place like Crescent Lake, it's got to kind of feel awkward because it's been, that spot's been open for quite a while. Uh, but it is a long walk to get there, and it's not it's super convenient. Uh, yeah, so. uh, I missed like, where Lord Fizzleby picked up the slab. I assume that was out of Crescent Lake. Oh, someone in chat caught where that was from. I believe so. I believe it was from here. Thank you, Classic Gamer. Yeah, so that, that came out of Crescent Lake. So we know okay. if um, Luffy or Wu Bear uh, decide to you know, head off toward hills or whatever, they are not missing out on a floater, which is good news for them. Oh, Luffy is checking sure. the sages and picking up his lab. <laughs> Apparently, I just had to wait two minutes, so I would have had my question answered. <laughs> uh, yeah, looks like Wu Bear kind of took taking a little bit of a swing at uh, at Earth Cave, deciding not to like after after finding a rough encounter, deciding not to to go about it. Maybe Baby was hunting for uh, hunting the trap tiles to kind of see what was there. Kind of yeah, exactly I mean the trap tiles are a little tricky, like we talked about. I think um, I think you might have just been seeing if it was worth uh, trying to walk down. Um, True. You know, you have Fade 7, you got Time 8. Like, you have the power to kill Lich if you can get down there, but if, you know, you're going to have to roll the dice on several encounters just to get down a couple floors, that's not usually uh, a time saver. And the uh, Fiend Dungeons do not have any incentivized items in them in this flag set, so there's not really a lot of reason to do them other than saving time um, proximity-wise. Indeed, we were... Still, yeah, also, awesome. is not in sale for Crescent, not for sale on Crescent, either. Ooh, Luffy checking the bottle merchant. Is this it? Sure it's, isn't. Sure isn't, but the, the houses are cheap. The, the, the market in this, the housing market in the seed is a uh, kind of pleasant. Yeah, I'd love to move there. Yeah, so Oxio for sale in on rack, conveniently enough. 27k, not not too bad um, by the time you get there. No, and you know, nice to know that's not going to gate any progress anywhere else. You know, you can just come back and wrap that all up in one uh, in one thing. Oh, so Goobie is going to give us our first look at Ice Cave. Eventually, when he gets there. So, this question from chat. So, how, how do you and this is something the source I would like your your take on. Like, so when 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 you're taking the encounters, kind of what do you gauge? Like, how do you gauge that it's worth actually taking the fight? Uh, largely, if you can kill it in one sort of action, like one AOE spell or one attack, if it's a single monster, um, and then you know how much XP is it going to give you for your time. Um, with the Endomizer, like, you can get stuff in 
you know, sky or sea shrine that's worth a lot of XP that isn't really that much harder to kill than anything in Volcano and will give, you know, double the XP. Um, so kind of just trying to hold out as long as you can, uh, you know, b before you start spending time um, trying to level up your, your characters. That makes sense. And Oof, there, he's, there is... uh, that white mage had a bad day. Uh, sea one. sharks, not to be confused <laughs> with the Gur sharks, or the Sea Sharks S E A. Yeah, yes, that, <laughs> that's a, definitely a bit unfortunate. The white mage went down early, but ooh, and squint from these guys also unfortunate. But we got out. So he was unfortunately going to have to do ice cave the long way as his exit caster is currently taking it now. Although I'm not sure if they found exit. I did see warp was found, but that uh, I don't think it still charges for that yet. So it looks like it's the chime that comes from waterfall. Okay. So that's uh, definitely required, but uh, also a you know a a, a a dead item. There's nothing that comes out of that. It's sad, but yeah, it's definitely definitely would hope to see a progression there. Yeah, after walking all the way in there, you would prefer to have found, uh, I guess at this point, the floater, really. I guess that's the only piece of regression that we're missing. Yeah, uh, yeah we know where the oxyl is. Uh, well, I think we know where the floater is. I think Bluebear is about to pick it up. Although I suppose it could be in ordeals. We haven't seen that yet. True. It's, it's... Your general equip quick equipping for this trap chest. Whiz mummy, but not the one you're thinking of. A ah, crystal. I did forget about the crystal. Ah, yes. Another another quest item to chase. Just quite yeah, right. pondering killing these and then deciding not to. It's the, the trap. Right? Yeah, it's. Thankfully, the thief being good at uh, good at running away helps quite a bit. Wow. Yeah, having a thief is um, is a very nice thing. Uh, I missed it in my race uh, in the second week's flex set. Um, it was quite unfortunate not being able to run from anything. Yeah, well, interesting too. The uh, little lack of black belts too, uh, also. I suppose kind of incentivizes like finding the room to make finding the room for a thief. I, I, I won't lie, I do kind of miss the uh, miss miss punch mage quite a bit. Yeah, punch mage is very strong. Um, I think because of the spell randomizer, uh, the idea was to really incentivize you to take uh, two or more mages, um, which is an easy sell when you can't take a black belt. True. So. I mean, I would be sad if I took a black belt and thief and two nuns, and there was, you know, nuke eight and uh, harm eight for sale. Yeah. So. There's X our floater from the crystal. All right. And an Xcal out of one of the chests here, too. That's. Uh, yeah, it didn't fine. look like a very high status Xcal, but that hurt all still works on everything except for chaos. Still, still should be good enough. Oh, it looks like. Oh, it looks like we're gonna go. Oh, I see. We're gonna do our deals now before we get the floater. Uh, this is a little bit quicker to do with your boat and canoe. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a walk, it's, uh, right? Like if you if you don't have your, or if you end up just taking the airship over. Oh boy, is it a walk? Yeah. Uh, there are two spots. Well, there are several spots you can land. Um, either all the way around the top of that forested area and then back down around to the south and west or you can continue east through a desert and over another little part of land and there's a spot you can park your airship um but yeah it's a it's a good long walk it's i think about as far as it is to walk from the landing spot to the fane so who is about to let us know is it always two it is always two nope always I never 
It's always four. Bluebeard knows this. I don't know why he didn't just go to four. Thankfully, I mean, he's, he's going to try that other branch, and yeah, you know, maybe it is two, but it is always four. Our co commentator no. Charlie's dog joining uh, the restream. Oh no. oh no. The uh, Newfie deciding that it is indeed always two. And the uh, protest. Oh, the I see. All right. Let's see which side your dog is on. Yeah. Chad, if you have opinions on uh, which pillar it is always <laughs> in, uh, in Ortiz, let us know. I'm curious to see if I'm correct. Uh, or not. Hashtag always four. <laughs> so we did get the cube pickup, which is good to good to have uh, between that and, and the waterfall, the nearby waterfall. Uh, you can get you get your sky castle access already, which is nice to get out of the way. You know, still kind of looking for really the 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 tail is the only thing we or the tail is the main thing we haven't seen, right? Yeah, um, I think at this point it is located in the um, Cardi Isles. Oh, we do have a bottle and a slab to turn in, but it is in one of those three places. Very true. And soon enough, we'll see one of the runners kind of reach those spots. Um, Blue being the first to get his airship. Looks like it. First player in the air. Uh Let's see where he goes from here. Looks like we're going to Elf. Oh, we're picking up. Uh, oh, we're picking up our white mage. <laughs> Just a little pit stop. Uh, yes, classic game. We're pointing out that you do have to train yourself not to panic when you see the Warbeck sprite, uh, because it's probably not Warbeck. <laughs> um, but you have to retrain yourself to panic when something in Sky is called War Whatever, um, because that one is Warbeck. Sometimes it's a ghost. Sometimes it's a tiger. I think a beast. There's a couple of them. They're terrifying. So true. It's uh. Doesn't come up often, but when it does, whoo, it, uh, it's pretty frightening. Yeah, Rojo uh, signing to take on, um, well, not Lich, it turned out to be Valvalis from uh, FF4. Um, classic uh, obnoxious boss over in that randomizer. Um, not uh, not so hard in this one, kind of just sort of fell over. Not, not too awful, and good to go ahead and get that out of the way, too. Uh, that, that can be a bit of a nuisance to get through. Yeah, it's kind of a long, long walk down. It does give you a tiny little boost of XP, um, which can help you with some other stuff like Ice Cave, if you haven't done it yet, uh, or walking up Sky without too much trouble, or Diving Sea Shrine, like Lord Fizzlebeef is doing. Yeah. We have uh, quite a bit of divergence here uh, in the uh, in the restream. This is uh, very interesting. I think the last race was pretty much everyone did the same stuff, so this is uh, very cool. It's quite a bit going on. It's nice to see. Uh, you know, with, you know, with, yeah, with Lord Fizzle Beef taking the dive down, uh, dive down to the uh, the Kraken spot or the original Kraken spot. Who knows what kind of what we'll see there? Blue Bear kind of making the sweep around the Cardi Isles, talking to all the dragons. And, yeah, he remembered. Um, yep. Rojo making the trip through uh, trip through ordeals. Hashtag always two. And uh, hashtag always four. And. Yeah, uh, with Luffy making making his way down to pick up the uh, pick up the floater, so uh, definitely a good a good split overall. Uh, looks like our cardia chest was a key. Um, we're picking that up. Uh, gonna go turn in his bottle now, which will either be the loot or the tail. The other one being uh, gated behind the slab. Don't it looks like yeah, there, there's a chance we might not get that one stop kind of turn in the slab hit the suit hit the super shop for your uh, for your ninja and your knight. Yeah, we and I have talked about this a lot. He is really hoping this is the tail right here from this bottle, and it is. 
The chime. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm, I believe I'm, I'm misread. Well, okay. So it's, sorry, it was the cube from Waterfall, not the chime. Um. So my, yeah. I, so yeah, it looks like it might very well. You know, it's either this or, or this. Yeah, it likely is the slab at this point. Oh, you know what? I think it was the loot that came out of Waterfall. Because there's our time. Ah, okay. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I hadn't really paid that much attention. I had noticed that Luffy had had the loot for a while. And, uh... Yeah. Well, yeah. There's uh, different names that can be given to to the loot uh, as well as the ruby. As I... Oh, that's true. It's just fun things. Fun things that I'm still learning. Uh, about mm. about the, this game and the way that the, the 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 love and care that have kind of been put into it. Yeah, we'll probably see. This makes a lot of sense for Ruber because now we're going to go to Onrak and get to sort of single dip, um, turning in, <clears throat> checking the uh, Onrak shop and going with waterfall, and taking a second to talk to Bahamut and Glass Change. Yep. That'll let him uh, equip the X cow, right? And I believe if if he has katana, which he does, okay. Very nice. We got a fast four gauntlet, which is cool. It's a heck of a find. That black shirt cast something. Not sure what though. <laughs> we'll probably see Wubeard pop into Elf Town and pick up his level three and four spells for the ninja while he's here. I don't see him walking back to Lafayne. I think this is where Temper 6 was anyway, which is probably the only spell you really care about picking up for the ninja. Yeah, very true. I mean, some of the AoE spells can yep, be kind mind. of nice. But... Oh, I see. We're going to hit Earth Cave while we're here. Makes sense. We have a lot of power now with the next Cal and Katana. Very true. Just kind of rallying it in nicely. It looks like... Luffy making his way in to pick up the key item here and talk to the rest of the dragons. These poor dragons, they didn't do anything wrong. They're just heartlessly executed. Yeah, they, they don't get in the way as quite as often as, uh, say, like Earth Cave bats. But... Or the bats in uh, Topher that you can't uh, get rid of. Ah, yes. All right, Luffy has their key. We'll see where they're going now. I suspect um, probably going to go turn in their slab. Yep. Oh, and their bottle. Okay. Luffy making his way down Earth Cave. We have Rojo just coming out of Ice Cave. Lord Fizzlebeef is somewhere getting squinted at. Uh, going into Ice Cave. Okay. Luffy getting their chime. We'll be fighting the vampire, who is actually a vampire today, although different color. It's funny when the vampire is like, you know, a worm or something. Or a lizard. Yeah. Dog was one that I got one time. That was fun. Uh, bird. Bird also a good one. Also uh, fun to see cat. Just plain cat. Mm-hmm. Not cat man or man cat, just cat. Yeah, one of the things if you do a lot of animizer that you can learn is uh, what the little uh, words or initials before monsters mean, um, because they are actually uh, indicative of something. It's not just a random character put in to spice up the name or whatever. Um, off the top of my head, I remember that Z is zombie which gives them the undead property, and uh, C gives them the water property and gets hurt by lightning, I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the sprites themselves all have um, like base stats and whatever. So it is sort of random, but there's also sort of rules to what monsters are which and what sort of powers that they have. Um, so if you play a lot of flags like this, you can sort of get an understanding of like what to expect out of certain monsters. But we only played these flags for a week, and I did not did not gain that understanding. 
Well, yes, there's a... There's a, some good documentation available through the uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer website as well that kind of goes into great detail on uh, on the Animizer itself. Yeah, uh, Jay Scheidel or Restreamer reminding me there is a doc in the wiki, which yes, I am familiar with. <laughs> I read a little bit of it. Uh, it was too much information, so I stopped reading it and I've just sort of been playing by instinct. Let's see. We have Wee Bear going down Volcano. I think we're going to get our first look at who Carrie is. Nope. Uh, Rojo coming out of Ice Cave, or Fizzlebeef, I think, also coming out of Ice Cave. So, yeah, it's been the. Uh, been quite the seed so far. Uh, definitely looking forward to seeing kind of how things kind of shake out, but there was a good bit of divergence we're starting to see kind of with uh, Luffy and Wubear kind of both in in the volcano and with uh, Lord Fizzlebeef and Rojo kind of getting out of Ice Cave, making the making the stop at the crystal, or ping, the crystal under the floater. Uh, starting to converge a little bit uh, after kind of that wild divergence that we had. Uh, between all four runners, which was quite quite good to see. It's always fun yeah. when that happens. Yeah, I mean, we're sort of running out of things to do, so we will definitely see people uh, sort of come back together, as it were. Uh, a freak standing in for Carrie, so a uh, fire fiend again. Um, just not the one you were expecting. Probably appropriate. Hmm. Um, Lord Fizzlebeef is also up uh, the Kraken fight. Um, so, you know, down a few checks, but up uh, kind of a long walk down to potentially a, an annoying boss. Um, so definitely still in this. You know, Lich and Carry are not especially difficult fights. So now that he has his floater, um, I expect he's going to catch up pretty quickly. Yeah, it, it, takes, a couple, it takes a couple of minutes of, of walking and running from encounters. Uh, and some of those encounters can be full of enemies that kind of take their swings and can take... You know, quite a long time to get away from. So, uh, for yeah. example, those weird tigers in the stone touch that we saw walking down to uh, Marsh Cave. Uh, you know, <laughs> stuff like that can just be anywhere. Oh yeah. This will be getting the slab translated. Uh, Rojo getting in the air. Luffy swinging by Earth Cave. It looks like, and we bear on his way up Sky. find out who our team at uh, Fiend is today. I think this will, yeah, this will be the point too where you might see yeah, see some encounters being taken in in Sea Shrine in you know in Sky Castle, right? Like there's I believe there's a, a bonus that's turned on for any of the uh, the for each of the key items that are key item finds that you get, right? Yes, uh, each key item gives you additional experience. Um, so at this point, Bear has everything except for his loot. Uh, so he is getting quite a bit of extra XP. Um, you know, you don't need as many levels necessarily in this flag set as you might want in others. Uh, it is short Topher, and the scaling uh, for boss stats is not as high uh, as it is in other flag sets necessarily. Um, so level 20-ish is usually good enough, especially with that Katana and Excal and, you know, availability of fast. Uh, and you can get that pretty quickly in, you know, a handful of encounters uh, up in the sky. And unlike last week, this week is uh, Short Topher, if I remember correctly, so... Uh, oh, it's so nice. <laughs> it is back to Long Topher for week four, but uh, it's a little kinder on the scaling, and uh, you can actually save outside of Topher. Indeed. So, uh... Answering a question from Chad, yeah, there was an Excal that came out of Matoya's cave. Uh, haven't seen the Masa come up yet, uh, but still, still could be out there. Not sure exactly how much uh, how much the folks will be looting, kind of from this point, but uh, very well. Yeah, could arrive. Be a tough sell for me to loot anymore with the Excal and the Katana. Very true. I think I'm with you. If you if you have enough to to beat the seed and just. Just vroom vroom. 
Uh, Boo Bear definitely very uh, adding me with his left and then up in the uh, sky maze. Um, saving his fractional frames by already holding the correct direction he gets in here. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> uh, up and left is uh, the true way. Uh, chat, I don't know. I think I asked this last time I was on comms. Someone said up and right and up and right, which I thought was wild and amazing. I am team up left, up left. Cool. All right. Taking so it behind that as an up lefter, I can uh, I can get behind up left, up left. Taking out some B ponies on the bridge of destiny, getting a lot of XP from them. That's uh that's a pretty good haul, almost six K for two or three of them. Yeah. Lord Fizzlebeef kind of uh, making making his way up to up to the Sky Palace. Oh, okay, that's Pirate in chat saying left down. That is uh, that is wild. That is some spice. Right is always wrong, says Guns Pirate. Left, up, up, left. I can get down All with right. that. Here's the sprite I wanted to talk about. This is the wrong half of the sprite. Well, see, the... Yes, okay, yes, we, I know there's the, the whole beam of, you know, show lag, etc., but we can't show feet, like, just, it has to be, you know, somewhat family-friendly, at least, I mean, I can understand. Mm. I'm just saying, coming from Final Fantasy IV, uh, <laughs> Rubicon's leg is a very important, integral part of his personality and that sprite, and, uh, it is, it is sorely lacking, I think. I think we need an additional Rubicon Sprite, which is just as like. So, the, the the top half and the lower half kind of is uh, maybe a separate fiends? That would be awesome. And then you could fight them back to back in Topher. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know how the alternate chaoses work if there's one that's made up of alternate fiends, but you could have some real wild looking chaos fights if you had a uh, Rubicon Sprite that was just legs. <laughs> So true. So. And Wooper picking up his loot and then doing his Kraken fight. Since we're here. Yep. Luffy on his way down to do Kraken. This will be on his way up Sky. Uh, I like his approach of just taking out the tougher fiends first and then he can just absolutely crush uh, the earlier fiends. He'll have his levels and everything by the time he gets there. Agreed. He's a. Uh, saw a team right, right, down, down. Not you know. I can, I can, I can understand. Like people, people want to do their thing. People have their their superstition of sorts. I'm Look, certainly, it, certainly guilty of that myself. It costs you like half a frame worth of time to choose the direction that really speaks to you when you do the sky maze. Don't don't let. Blue Bear or whoever pressure you into going left and then up because you're holding left when you walk into the stairs and then you want to be holding up on the bridge of destiny. Like, I get it. Just let people have their joy. You know what I mean? Very true. Yeah, Jay Shadow calling out, like, people are just have nostalgia for how they did it as a kid and they just want to relive that. How I did it as a kid, I would just get mercilessly lost because I didn't have a strategy guide and just kind of had to figure it out. <laughs> I want to say there's an NPC in Lufane that tells you how to do it. Maybe. Ah. Or maybe it was in the uh, instruction manual. I know that I knew how to do it when I got there, but I don't remember where I got the information. I cannot wait for Wubear to watch back this uh, restream and see all of chat uh, disagreeing with him that left and up is the only correct way. So, Luffy getting the uh, the Titan fight out of the way. So he'll be uh, you know, just, just Sky Castle away from having all four fiends done. So. Yeah, uh... I think he and Wubear are going to be getting there pretty close to the same time. Um, you know, Wubear is already here at Onrak, but walking down to Kraken is a little bit longer than walking up Sky, depending on encounters. It's going to be a close race. 
That it is. It's uh, shaping up to be a good one, most certainly. So. Uh, and, you know, Lord Fizzleweef, honestly, maybe it doesn't look like it on paper, but kind of right behind Woodbear. He has the two easiest uh, fiend fights to do. You know, Lich is a little bit of a walk, but walking down a carry does not take any time at all. Yeah, very true. Sure. I don't see him. I'm not sure if it, someone really take too many fights. So, um, I mean, you might, you might see him take some fights on the way down. I don't know. Uh, I'm not, sure, not exactly sure how the experience situation looks. Like. Okay, actually, it looks like you should be okay. Yeah, he uh, took a few encounters on the Bridge of Destiny before uh, Tiamat, so I think he okay. should be good to go. The yeah, fighter had almost uh, or, yeah, almost 500 HP, so it should be all right. Uh, yeah, it's the, the spells are interesting in this on the Fiends, because um, they have access to all the same spells that you have access to, uh, which means you, know, you can have some pretty heinous Fiends, um, but sometimes they also don't have any good spells, and... Uh, you know, they just fast ate themselves and then die. So, who knows? I've definitely had a chaos that had, like, you know, Fade 7 and uh, Flare 8 and Bane 6 and, like, killed my whole party real fast. <laughs> but it's not always like that. Um, I didn't I didn't note, uh, did we find any, like, defensive gear or the wall spell or anything like that? I don't recall seeing anything outside of the early wall eight spell um okay so we do have wall eight that's good that that is a huge help in getting through uh topher i mean you just throw it up at the beginning of every fight and uh it protects you from uh everything yeah so yeah i don't recall seeing any type of roost sticks or anything uh roost sticks defense sword anything like that but uh it's really at least having that will, will, will be a big help yeah, I mean, I think the plan is to just kill the fiends before having ruse matters. <laughs> Not wrong. Uh, there's a, yeah, the, the, the scaling can be a, a little bit kinder than, say, the scaling that we had last week. Uh, so, like, there's a, a a bit more area, a bit area if it, don't necessarily have to be alive as long. Yeah, and also, if you do wipe on chaos, it is way less punishing. Um, or any of the fiends uh, on a flex set like this than it is when you have to walk the entirety of Topher multiple times. Indeed, and uh, Luber being the first on, on stream to step into Topher. Ooh, yeah, so that I was talking about there's the Paprika with uh, Fade 8. Uh, fortunately, not killing anyone. The Black Mage left with 7 HP in a dream. Uh, the, uh, the slimmest of margins. You got exactly enough levels on that black mage. It's like a freak might just go down before he can do anything. Yeah, there's he freak down. And here's Titan. Let's see if Titan gets to take an action. Oh, cast an ice three. Okay, not that scary. Um, again, since the power on the spells is spread out between one through eight. Uh, Ice 3 is not the same power as Ice 3 in sort of vanilla spells. And something sort of I don't. Which is the light tickle there. And something I don't think we really touched on uh, is that with all the different items, uh, I think there's no ribbon in the flag set, right? Matt? And just the resistances are kind of split out. We didn't talk about that. Um, yeah, no ribbons in this flag set, um, but random pieces of equipment have random resistances. Uh, and just the one stone. Okay. Might, uh, speaking of which, we might have uh, poison resistance or ice resistance on um, something that the thief and uh, fighter have on. But yes, with no ribbons, that wall 8 spell is very, very nice because it basically just puts a ribbon on your whole party. Alright, through all the fiends, no, uh, no must, no fuss there. Absolutely. Rojo making his way down to... Uh making his way up to uh, the Tiamat spot, and you know, Fizzlebeef kind of just clearing up the last of his fiends. So, um, Luffy kind of making his way into uh, into the Chaos fight here pretty shortly. Looks yeah, like. right on Moobear's heels, for sure.
All right, Chaos, what you got? Time eight, okay. Oof. Some kind of time resistance on the top two, uh, the important characters. That's always good. Oh, we're doing some good damage. This fight is uh, not going to last very long, I don't think. Oh, well, we didn't crit that time. Oh, good night, White Mage. And good night, Chaos. Nope, not quite. The slow coming out, too. That could be. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Depending on turn order. Oh. There it is. GG's. GG's to Woo Bear. Yeah, that's. Bear, uh, first on Restream and first overall. Uh, GG's to him. Very well done. Very well navigated. Uh, just routed out quite well uh, for him. Let's see, you know, Luffy kind you know, of diving in here. Uh, Fizzle Beef kind of making his way through the through the I guess the quote unquote yeah, crack, I missed, crack I missed what had happened, but um, Luffy did not survive their first encounter with Chaos. Yeah, it's it was kind of a kind of a rough fight. Uh, like if with the with the spells that came out, like it could be you know, pretty tough. Oh, uh, Bushmano calling out in chat that Ruby had the cry eight, which I guess um, Luffy did not have resistance to. Ah, uh, yeah. cry eight being an ice flavored uh, petrification spell, um, which is which is fun. All right, so Fizzle Beef going into his chaos fight, and we are joined by our first place finisher, Whipper. Whipper, how you doing? Oh, well, I'm all right. Very well done, GG's Whipper. Thank you, thank you. So, so, how are you feeling? What did What did you think about the uh, think about things overall? Like, can you can you kind of tell us about the uh, the early game and kind of your thoughts on how thing how to route things out? Uh, I just kind of went where. The kid of Zobi to go. It was fairly linear, so it's like, oh, you have Herb now. Go do Herb. It's like, okay. Uh, I I enjoyed the walk cycle. That was nice. Gotta love those nice long walks off the uh, hard reset. Yeah, always uh, always a fan of those. Um, what was your least favorite part of the scene? Uh, I usually save the fiends until like. I'm done with getting the key items, but I was like near Earth, and I'm like, ah, just dip in there. And I immediately got four stoned or whatever it was, and I was like, all right, I'll go somewhere else. It's cool. Fair enough. Also, uh, that ice caves was like very scary. Yeah, it looked a little spooky. It's rarely a good time. <laughs> no, <laughs> I hate ice caves. And that dump means we're also joined by our second place on Restream and second place overall finisher, Lord Fizzlebeef. How you doing, Beef? Hello. Hello. GG's. Very well done. That was, that was a ride. <laughs> what are your thoughts uh, on this flag set in general, uh, Beef? Are you enjoying it? Or are you not enjoying it? So, uh, the more I play around with Enemizer new enemies the slightly less I don't like it. But I do feel like it really fits in with the rest of the flag set, so that also um, makes everything a lot more enjoyable. I think the real um, stealth sneaky thing is the Shattered Ribbon, because that really can alter your play style. And if you actually practice for it, um, you can just basically have a party full of ribbon characters. Yeah, we had picked up something that he had equipped on his ninja and fighter that gave time resistance, and I think uh, petrification or ice resistance, and that was clutch getting through um, Topher. Yeah, especially uh, between, that chaos. Yeah. Between Canaria, Provoca, and Elfland, my party had six of eight resists, and then fighter had death. The only yeah. thing my party was vulnerable to was status. Yeah, not a lot of that in those final fights. Just a lot of damage and petrification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't shop at all. <laughs> I just put on stuff <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Hope for the best. Yeah. It seems like you know, with with all the, the random things that can kind of pop up, yeah, you could very well find your five gold leather bracers in Corneria that just have you know, 
resists to four different things. It's a mm-hmm. nice little interesting spin for sure. Uh, yeah, but mm-hmm. who wants to spend the four seconds looking at that? <laughs> Roll slowly, the dice. Slowly raise his hand. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> no, especially with uh, short Topher, I like to play a little riskier. Mm-hmm. I normally would go for that, but Spellcrafter is very scary when those spells are incoming. Oh yeah. boy. Oh, it can it be, yeah. Yeah, like I lose that horribly if my fighter and ninja don't have time resist with the double Tim 8 right back, off the bat. From back to else. back time mm-hmm. 8s, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he hit my white mage before she could even heal herself, so I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> I was yeah, I mean, nervous at that point, but... Luckily for you, it was just another time 8 that you resisted. If it had been something you didn't resist, that definitely could have gone sideways. Yeah, like that crack that I just saw happen on Luffy's mm-hmm. screen. Yeah, Luffy not having a great time. Did not see the crack, luckily. I don't think it would have worked on you anyway. Uh, yeah, probably not. I mean, you did, You don't know, because you didn't look at your gear. I didn't look at my gear. <laughs> if I couldn't wear it, I'd put it on. That's that's about that. So, yeah. We're seeing a crack and inferno as well. It just, this chaos is not kind. Yeah, I mean, Barbarica also having Fade 8, uh, not a great start to, uh, the tough for experience. I liked your black mage looking with seven HP. Ruben. Yeah, <laughs> so, just enough. He had exactly the HP total he needed. So, Rojo now making the dive. for uh, the supposed speed bump or whatever of the Topher. It's yeah, there's certainly more. Like there's certainly seeds, and this is one that was a more on more on the the harsh side for Topher. It seems like, uh, in kind of some of the seeds that I've seen, the seeds that I've run, uh, some real, like you said, speed bumps uh, that, that, that can, can come up. So. Yeah, like like uh, Fizzle mentioned, like they can have those spells too. All those cool spells that you get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely had the you know Tophers where everyone has Fade Seven, and then I've also had the ones where you know uh, the fiends just cast Fast Six on themselves and then die. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, chaos spamming fire twos. Like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, everyone else... like Go ahead. with um the spell tables for these fiends are basically double randomized because alt fiends scrambles them and then spellcrafter scrambles them after that. So any given tofer I'm going in is just like they will have spells. It's Most... just the cloud fiesta <laughs> of magic. Yeah. yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm very happy to. Uh, oh, sorry, very, go ahead. I was just uh, very happy to find the katana and the Excal or whatever the heck I had. That was kind of my like big worry because I, I try not to loot a whole lot. But yeah, finding those two was like, hey, now I smack. Yeah, not having to go out of the way to find those, pretty definitely a huge get. Like they're kind of just on the path to do things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as fun as um, the spells can be, I like having a katana with like a hundred and something crit and a bunch of uh, damage and hit. A lot of fun. Yeah, that was actually kind of a sad katana in this scene compared to some of the ones that you've rolled in practice. It was only oh, 27 yeah. attack. Uh, what was the one you had the other day? It was like 55, 40, 55, 120 50... something. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was I was digging for an endgame weapon and I opened the katana. I'm like, this will work. And I'm like, wait a minute. My subconscious is telling me that it will not work. Let's look at the numbers. And it's like 20 attack power. No, we're going to keep opening boxes. We, <laughs> surely we can find something better than this. Yeah, he still out damaged my um, fighter by a decent amount. I didn't even get a chance to get any tempers off because my black mage went down like immediately. To, <laughs> yeah, he uh... sure did. They were <laughs> Your mages were not resistant at the time, turns out. Nope, nope, nope. nope. All right, Rojo is on their final, uh, well, hopefully for them, their final push through Chaos. We'll find out here in a minute. Absolutely. Yeah, and then the uh, Invis casts, the Invis pickup was pretty huge, too, uh, to, to kind of help kind of push through. And, yep, GG's to Rojo. That was, uh, it was well done. GG's. Hey, thank you. GG to everybody else. GG's. Yeah, GG. GG. 
Uh, in between Rojo and Fizzlebeef, we had Slurry Rex in third, uh, Budge Mano in fourth, Ozzolato in fifth, and Rubes in sixth, followed by Rojo in seventh place. How'd you feel about the seed, Rojo? Honestly, uh, pretty good until I saw Wu Bear finish for the blazing sub 50. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I felt like I was doing everything pretty much right, but apparently that's not the case. Uh, no, I think you ran that pretty well. Um, did you feel like you stumbled on anything in particular, or? No, not really. Um, I, uh, I've had way worse practices to go to like an hour five, hour ten, so sub one hour <laughs> felt pretty good. Yeah, we were talking about it a bit in here. I, I tend to play a lot riskier. I don't shop, like, at all, <laughs> and I don't look at <laughs> resistances or anything. Mostly because, like, I don't know a lot of them, so just kind of mm -hmm. put on stuff and hope for the Fair best. Enough. Have you done a lot of practice with this, Brojo? What are your thoughts on this flag set? Uh, I mean, it's interesting. It's something different. It's cool to see, you know, the alternate fiends and play around with the uh, the spells. I think that, like, White Mage, you know, harm buff or whatever, like, or White Mage harm affects everything is a, a little OP. Oh, uh, God, yeah. Harm uh, is my favorite spell. Uh, harm is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's it's fun, fun, you know version i guess from you know what you consider to be more traditional flags are you yeah, we... sad to see it go or do you wish we had another week of this no i mean i i think i'm ready to move on uh, i'll i'll definitely probably you know like play around with these or, or something and at some point in the future shattered ribbon I mean, when you're at least in a race environment, Shattered Ribbon is just chaos. So you just grab whatever and wear it. And that's kind of the end of it. You know, like you don't have time to be like, oh, well, this one gives me an extra resist. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't change any of my gear out in the field. I had to wait till I got to a shop. So the icons would load properly. It's like, all right, what do you do again? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's why I kind of was just hoping for like wall eight and then I don't have to worry about it, but. I think it was at like level seven or eight magic in Gaia. See, I put off shopping for magic until I was going to go to Lafayne, but then I tail was in Lafayne, of course. So, of course. Um, yeah, I didn't shop past level four, so <laughs> I didn't have anything. But, uh, yeah, I saw the the invis pickups, Rojo. That the invis pickup, Rojo. That was like super huge to kind of get through get through some of those fights. It was. Something I always like, kind of lean on personally. Like, I uh, would like to find Invis, would like to find a Ruse, something like that. So yeah, that, that seemed to certainly help kind of get through that last part. Yeah, uh, it's always nice to have the evasion, especially when it's higher level in these uh, flags. Like, I think one or two Invis eight casts would get you to max evasion for the whole party, which is really Dude, nice. Yep. I think I had like Invis five though. Which was, I don't know, I guess it was enough for the couple times I used it. I had a lot of fun with um, Fog as well. It's not a spell I usually use in the normal game, but Fog 8, it's like kind of hardcore. Yeah, we were talking about that a little bit during the restream. I mean, adding a Opal bracelet worth of defense to your whole party is uh, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I actually didn't even really look at Fog uh, this this seed. I <laughs> might have used it once in a practice, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, regular fog, not so great. Fog eight's like plus thirty something defense. Your whole squad, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might Man, even be huge. more than that. It's real, it's real strong. It's like just as good as invis, really. Actually, yeah, maybe even better because I guess if you get crit through. Max really, it's basically you, you have two paths to making your party melee immune. You can either yeah. cast fog eight twice, or you can cast invis eight twice. They'll both yeah. do the same thing. <laughs> it's like. Luffy uh, is having a little trouble with resists right, right about now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ruby is making him cry over and over again. In, in between Ruby and, uh, and Chaos. Chaos. Ooh. All right, we rolled gotcha. uh, rolled some saving throws there and didn't get turned to stone. That's good. getting hit with the uh, getting hit with the Tims. It's hardcore, mm -hmm. rough. Especially Tim Eight. It's a tough guy that one. I mean, Tim through six and seven are no slouches either. I, I do love the names uh, that some of the names come up, like uh, Frost Anks, and it's just like Frank. It's like, hey, yeah, a fish. 
Yeah, a bird is one of my favorites. <laughs> a dog. Yeah, we had a we had an encounter today with birds and very birds. Oh, oh nice. birds, yeah. Extremely birds. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite so far has been letter C shark. Uh, yeah. Just... yeah, not to be confused with the C shark. <laughs> I think, um, I don't know, I've been hearing some wild stuff about what's coming up next week as far as uh, flags. Something about tra Transmoog? Yep. Transmoog. Yes. Yeah, so Never heard of it. I have not looked at it at all. Well, so I looked at it for... like the characters, but I haven't So played. basically, this flag set is randomized everything except your classes are vanilla. Yep. And the next week, everything else is vanilla and the classes are randomized, sort of. Yeah. The sales pitch for uh, Transmoog is uh, remember classes? No, you don't. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've done a few practices because I'm already done with this flag set as of Sunday, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting trying to figure out what the other classes even do. Yeah, there's some pretty good, like gnarly ones. Like Sage looks pretty cool, or is it Sage? There's one that has like both magic schools, anyways. You get like dragoons and all sorts of like cool classes. I don't know. Seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah sounds, it should sounds be interesting. interesting. It is back to Long Topher, which is stinky, yeah. but you know. <laughs> I did it's hear the same, that uh, medium same topher. scaling at least. I yeah, I saw your thing about medium topher. Yeah. I hope that becomes the thing. Yeah, that should be interesting. I uh something about you, you can go straight to Earth basically. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this it's like wiping the idea is, is still to skip those but... those first three floors of nothing and go straight to the feed floors. Yeah. All right, Luffy, you can do this. I believe in you. He's uh, hoping for good turn order, hoping for uh, some good RNG to come around. It's been uh, definitely unfo un unforge for sure. Oh, <laughs> totes unforge. I feel like uh, this is a problem that could be solved by the Canaria Armor Shop. Well, mm -hmm. I mean... You're not wrong. I mean, just a hunch. I don't know. There's there's some resist gear in there, uh, and that's yep. mostly what I was wearing between that and like maybe one other shop somewhere. I don't know. Uh, okay. From about the white mage just turned to stone. All right. Scorch didn't do anything. Oh, all right. Ah. Okay. Nope. <laughs> I thought that was gonna be the one. Tricked me. Yeah, it was the Mithril Shield and the Silk Helmet that had the uh, time that I had on. All right, Ruby Joe. Yeah. I don't know if uh, I know Vuber is um, Fizzle Beef or uh, Roger. Are you familiar at all with Final Fantasy IV, where Ruby is from? Sort of. I am not. I've played the vanilla okay. version a couple times. So his whole sprite. He has this huge leg that's sticking out of his cape. It's a very Sometimes. like, it's a very muscly leg, and mm -hmm. um, a whole bunch of memes about it over in the Final Fantasy Free Enterprise uh, randomizer community. And I was disappointed that the leg part of the sprite is not the sprite. <laughs> oh. We were talking we about how we so should have pixels. we should have another alternate fiend sprite, which is just the leg half. I I wouldn't be opposed to that. He flashes it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he opens his cape up. He's like, check out this leg. <laughs> Ooh, this chaos fight is going somewhere. He, he got the wall it. off, so he's he's in there. He's, he's getting some it. good Ooh. damage out. Oof. It's Swirl not oh, resisted by anything. Next attack, though. next attack. This is it right here. Okay. Oh. Oh my god, we have to be close. Keep dodging. Oh, okay. You got the invis offs too, yeah. You should oh, yes, it is. Yes, yes. got hey, there. GGs. GGs. Awesome. GGs. Nine HP more than uh, you needed. We are joined by Luffy. Um, how you doing, bud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, you ever try to shave two minutes off your run by not going into shops and then add 20 minutes on at the end by not going into shops? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, like, I felt the routing was, like, kind of fine, I thought. 
you know, I'll watch it back to see kind of where we all were at about 34 minutes was when I finally was like, all right, I know what I'm doing. And then, yeah, like I was on Rubicon when I think Wu finished. I'm like, oh, this isn't too bad. I'm like right behind him and then cryo and then everything else and then everything else again. And then the third time and a fourth time, it just it was bad. Yeah, I don't know if you were in that that whole time, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you want to hear this, Luffy, but I think had you not wiped uh, there, you would have been the second right behind Wu. I had a feeling when I saw Fizzle finish, I'm like, all right, well, I took one and a half wipes so far. I mean, whatever, this is fine. I'll get through on this dive. And then slowly everybody started finishing, and I just felt just so bad. That feels like my week uh, two race where Team <laughs> Atu decided that I was not allowed to finish. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there ain't no quitting this guy, and he's just going to do the best he can. So it is what it is. It's over. I don't got to think about this anymore, and that's sad because these were fun. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed the Slack set quite a bit, too. Um, mm-hmm. Mostly because it was so fast. And yeah, there were no Zonky items. Every every check was worth doing. I didn't have to worry about, like, doing the wrong check. Yeah, that's what felt really good about these. Like, there was no dud. You, any decision you're going to have to do, everybody is going to have to do the same thing. Just what order are you going to do it in? And I kind of like that. It's pretty cool. But yeah. GG's everybody tonight. That was fun. Not really. <laughs> it was fun until it wasn't. It was. It was fun until it wasn't. And then it really, really, really wasn't. <laughs> Kudos to you for sticking that out, being pers- being persistent. That, yeah. That, that very easily could tilt folks. And, and just, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, big props. Thank you. I mean, to me, like, it. I don't know. And I'm not throwing shade at anybody that forfeits, but like, why? I'm going to finish last anyway at this point. Let me just finish. <laughs> like, it is what it is. Yeah. And sort of, you know, how close all the finishes were in this race. Um, you know, you mm-hmm. don't even end up that bad off points wise. Uh, you know, you're not in that. I hope not. Either, so. I hope not. I'm sorry, team. I tried and it was looking good for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any thoughts on next week's flags, Luffy? Man, I haven't even looked at that. Like, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair. I know that it's like chaos. Like, Shum's throwing a couple seeds at me, and like, he gave me one. He was like, all right, these classes are like kind of normal. Let me give you another one. And then there was like stuff I, I couldn't even spell. And I, I, I think it's really cool. Like, I think it's a really neat feature. I've maybe played one <laughs> of these ever. Um, because, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm an old school Final Fantasy player, I guess. Like, even proc gen's a little much for me sometimes. So, Transmoog is, might as well be, I don't know, a different language. But I am looking forward to learning and playing it and having fun. There you go. That's the whole, uh, that's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I do love about this randomizer. Is it, so many different changes that, like, completely, you know, change the, the base game even. It's really cool. A lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So much, so much care and thought have gone into into this that it's just it's really cool to see kind of coming from a coming like similarly to to, to Swords kind of coming from FF4. Uh, yeah. It just it's cool to see kind of the the dev team put in some really great work. Yeah, for such a janky like very simple game, <laughs> it's like look at all this cool stuff. Like, uh, yeah, one of the things honestly I think I appreciate most about the rando is all of the janky vanilla stuff that got fixed. <laughs> You know, crit rates and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, if no one else has anything else they want to add, um, just a reminder, there's another match tomorrow night, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That will be over on the FF1 Rando Twitch channel. Um, yeah, be there or be square, I guess. Absolutely. Big, uh, big shout-outs to... Uh... Saranis and Herbie B for pushing all the buttons. Thanks to Jay Shadell for uh, putting on the uh, putting on the restream. And so it's definitely for... been a blast. It has been a lot of fun. And thanks, obviously, to RPG Limit Break for letting us uh, play around on their channel. We promise we didn't break anything. Mostly. Mostly. We might have broke Luffy, but I think we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bounce back. I'll get over it. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone, have a great night, uh, and goodbye. 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 Bye.